So the word defibrillator for today, where we are trusting God for a word from within the word. My word. Have we heard it before? But today, we are going to go and find the word for today. Remember, that that's what we do. We're looking and saying, yeah, even though we've heard this before, in the context of today, what is it that God is trying to tell you and I? As at the 4th of the 11th, 2021. For the love of Christ controls and urges and empowers us. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ controls and urges and empowers us. Because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. Now, if you want to stop people from drinking alcohol, what do you do? Do you take away the alcohol that they have in, the, in their possession? Or do you go close down the bottle stores and do you make it illegal? No, the only way that we'll ever be able to stop that is you have to shut down the factory. You have to shut down that that produces the alcohol that others can consume it. So now when it comes to man who is a sinner born into sin, basically has Sinner and Mr. and Mrs. Sinner as their surnames, how do you get man to stop sinning? Well, you have to shut down the factory. You have to die to self. And when you, sud when you shut that down, then man stops sinning. So here it comes in and says, for the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us and he's saying you need to understand is that his love for us was to die to end sin and its control and hold over us that sin that leads to death and that's an amazingly big love so it will urge us and impel us because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all then all died so we've all died in christ and he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake do you know he did it for you not for himself what he gets out of the whole thing is is that his obedience to the father and the satisfaction that he was used to rescue us and restore us back to the Father. And because of that, it says in verse 16, Consequently, from now on, we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view, in terms of natural standards of value. No, even though we once did estimate Christ from a human point of view, and as a man, yet now we have such knowledge of him that we know him no longer in terms of the flesh. We know him within the spirit. We know that we know that we know that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord's, Lord of Lords. There's no negotiations within our spirit. Sometimes we might actually doubt that when we see things manifest, manifest in the fleshly realm and go, oh really? Where is God when that happened? And if God was God, why did he allow that to happen? Well, you see, that's when you know him in the flesh and you're allowing the flesh, the present, to make those judgments for you. I mean, Jesus, when he was going to go to the cross, also in the flesh, like, I can't do this. But do you know how much strength and power it must take? And understanding to be able to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. How can you even say that? I can even say that those people are hurting other people and they don't know. Well, they didn't. We didn't. Yet he still died for us. So consequently, from now on, we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view. 
in terms of natural standards of value. That's one of the things is we're tolerating people completely all the time. And we should be celebrating one another. We should. Because when you're looking at that other person, oh my gosh, Jesus doesn't look at them in the physical. Because in the physical, and for the deeds that we do, should we even breathe another breath? But because of what he knows and sees in the spiritual, he sees us as spiritual. Therefore, eternity has such a major play in the world. It is all about eternity and rescuing people into the presence of the Father. Because it is forever. You and I live forever. Jesus just changed where that will happen, giving us access to the kingdom of heaven by giving our lives to him. And he has that scripture that we've heard so many times. And it does make so much sense now. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation. A new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away talking about it in the physical and in the spiritual all together behold the fresh and new has come how amazing is that when you look at people now it's a new creation it's that thing where you have the lady who's a prostitute and she suddenly realizes oh my gosh this is not right she gets reconciled to God through Christ. She gives a life to Christ. Isn't she a new creation? Doesn't the Bible say that he will remove her transgressions as far as the east is as far as from the west? It doesn't it say that uh, he will purify her as white as snow? Doesn't it mean that in his eyes she's a virgin? A new creation? Why is it that we hold it against ourselves and others on what we've done? I've spent many times speaking to people and saying, all you have to do is give your life to Christ. Oh, no, no, but Sean, I'm not good enough. If you only know what I've done in my life. That all disappears on that day that you give your life to Christ. And those who have need to look at others in the same light, in the same vision that Jesus Christ did. And the Father. In our humanity, hmm, but in the spirit, oh, glorious. Glorious, glorious, glorious. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are engrafted in Christ. That we are a new creation, a new creature altogether. That our old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away, gone, never to return. That we will never, ever pick it up again that this is that day 4th of the 11th 2021 that we walk away and we stand up as that new creation and we go to the world we stand in front of the mirror we look at ourselves and we say behold the fresh and new has come father we thank you we love you thank you for your grace your mercy and the privilege to be able to call you Father. And Lord Jesus, to be co-heirs with you. To have you as our King. That we do not live for ourselves. But we live to and for you. Who died and was raised again for our sake. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.